Microsoft Ignite 2019 kicks off and it comes at a weird time for Microsoft given that they have capacity issues and a few other little flubs. Uh, we're here with Mary Jo Foley to talk about everything announced at Ignite and what IT pros can expect. Welcome, Mary Jo. Thanks, Larry. So I guess starters, let's just talk about the timing of this show. Uh, it's probably not what Microsoft had hoped to do, but they've run into some capacity issues. So let's just cover that off the top. What's going on with Azure? Right. Um, so I started hearing from uh, customers this past week about capacity issues they're hitting in US East, th East 2 region for Microsoft, mostly around virtual machines. And you know, this comes at a weird time because everybody just assumes cloud, it's ultimately uh, scalable in every way, and you're never going to run out of anything, right? But people who are trying to spin up certain types of VMs are being told by Microsoft, sorry, we don't have any capacity. And I, I've been talking to people um, after I posted a story about this, and they said, it's not just US East, too, that South Central may be having it in other regions. So Microsoft's trying to get around it by redirecting traffic to other data centers that they have. But people are saying even those data centers are hitting capacity issues as well. So this is going to become a huge marketing issue for just the cloud stuff in general. Like if, if I'm AWS, I'm pouncing all over this. I, I, I couldn't so. resist, right? I know. Yeah, it's, yeah, it, it's a major issue. So yeah. uh, do you anticipate this coming up at Ignite at all in terms of saying mm -hmm. anything? Uh, I don't think they're going to address it. I'm going to try to ask around about it because I'm, what I'm curious about is, is this an issue of improper planning on Microsoft's part or is it more like a, a, a component shortage and that's why they can't spin up certain kinds of servers? Uh, because, you know, they always talk about they have the most cloud uh, data centers of any provider. So this seems kind of to uh, go right against their messaging here. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because there are some other data points like Arista Networks. Their quarter blew up because they have, um, they call them cloud titan customers, mm -hmm. basically the hyperscales. Mm -hmm. And one pulled back spending pretty dramatically. Wow. Um, and their two biggest customers for Arista are Facebook and Microsoft. Oh, wow. Although they seem to say it wasn't Microsoft over and over again. <laughs> um, so I don't know, but something's yep. going on and yeah, hopefully we'll find out at Ignite. So okay. what else is Microsoft, what, what do they have on tap? So I think the biggest announcement they're going to make, or at least they're going to say this is their biggest announcement, is what they're calling Azure Arc, A-R-C. This is their hybrid 2.0 strategy. And it's kind of a branding thing that they're doing that's wrapped around a strategy, right? So there's branding components and then there's strategy components. On the branding side, they're rebranding some of their Azure Stack uh, products. So Azure Stack is that appliance that they have for hybrid uh, private cloud computing that they've been selling for a number of years with a, a bunch of their partners like HP and uh, Dell Lenovo. So they're gonna rebrand Azure Stack as Azure Stack Hub then they're going to take Azure Data Box Edge, which is their uh, onboarding appliance. So if you have data that you want to onboard into the cloud, they're going to call that Azure Stack Edge. So everything is being called Azure Stack, right? Then you have this Arc thing that is um, a whole set of other technologies they're building that are going to take the Azure management and other Azure services to be able to run on-premises, on other clouds, and on the edge. So it doesn't mean Azure services running on Google Cloud. It's more about managing your services from Azure wherever they are. So if you have Kubernetes in Google, they're trying to make it so you can manage that through Azure, is my understanding. I think my head just exploded. Oh, me too. I've been um, trying to figure this out all week. <laughs> I actually kind of like the Azure Stack branding. And now you're tossing Hub and Arc and all this other stuff. And it's just confusing. But seems to me the gist of this is kind of what Dell Technologies and HPE and, and a bunch of other and VMware, mm -hmm. they're all trying to do the same thing. They're all trying to plug into all these other things. Right. And then have you use them as the management plane. Basically. Exactly. That's what it is. It's like Microsoft wants you to use Azure as the management and control plane for your services wherever they are. Okay. Um, so, you know, that's an interesting pitch. It's kind of like what AWS is doing with Outposts and kind of what Google's doing with Anthos. Like it's kind of Microsoft coming back to their own hybrid platform and saying, okay, now our biggest competitors have announced hybrid also, and we're going to make sure that we're 
still continuing to lead the pack on hybrid. Yeah, it's it's also weird too because that management plane increasingly seems to be VMware. Mm -hmm. so, and Microsoft has a deal with VMware too, so that fits. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Well, well, I guess I guess the main thing there is just to see what people say on the floor and whether they yeah. get it. Definitely. Um, hopefully they're smarter or something, but this sounds like it's Microsoft's typical branding where it confuses yeah. the hell out of you at, at the beginning. Exactly. <laughs> so, so what's the, what's the other thing on tap? Um, so there's going to be some interesting office and AI announcements at the show. Um, one of the big ones is about uh, a new service that Microsoft's bringing to Microsoft 365 that they're calling the knowledge network. So people who've covered Microsoft or paid attention to Microsoft for years may remember at one point, Microsoft said they wanted to get into the knowledge management business, and they had an idea of adding a, a knowledge management portal to Office 365. Well, that never happened, but now it's going to happen, basically. So this, this uses Microsoft AI technology, and it will classify companies' uh, to content into topic areas, and it will identify experts inside your company who have corporate knowledge. and then. This uh, service will disseminate that information into the Office apps and into Outlook um, and into Teams, Microsoft's group chat product. So this is going to be, uh, it's in private preview now, going to be available in the first half of 2020. I think it sounds like a really interesting service, especially when integrated with Teams. Is this using LinkedIn data at all? No. Nope. LinkedIn continues to go its own merry way. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Like that, Microsoft really good. Knows. They seem to be doing pretty well. But I know. Yep. I, I would think when it comes to finding experts within your company, LinkedIn probably has all that stuff laying around already. You would think. Um, maybe at some point they will bring that capability in. I keep waiting for them to tie the Microsoft graph to the LinkedIn graph, but so far that hasn't happened either. Um, so what? Maybe once that happens, if it ever does, they'll be able to take advantage of that with things like the Knowledge Network. Is this Knowledge Network more of an HR app? Um, you know, they're not really positioning it that way from what I can tell, but since they have a lot of HR technology in Dynamics, maybe at some point they'll kind of feed in with that as well. They didn't really talk to me about tying Dynamics into this scenario, but it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, I keep waiting for them to tie LinkedIn, Dynamics, and all that stuff together, and they would probably have an HR suite pretty easily. Yeah, they're, they're getting there. Every once in a while, they're, at, they're buying up little technologies and adding things to the HR products in Dynamics. But so far, they haven't really pushed that as hard. I think, I think they will be at some point, though. Okay. And, and there's some Edge news, I guess, on the horizon? There is. So um, Microsoft's Chromium-based Edge, the next version of Edge, is going to be in, available as a release candidate the week of Ignite. And they're telling people now that Chromium-based Edge will be publicly available January 15th, 2020. So I've been using this as my daily browser now, and it's actually very good. I didn't like the original Edge. It didn't work for me. It was very slow, and I had some compatibility issues with various web apps. But this version of Edge is quite good. And, and the idea here is, is that what it's all about? It's about the compatibility with everything else? It is. So the reason that Microsoft decided to ditch their own backend and go with Chromium was because they were having, and their customers were having not a lot of compatibility issues, but just enough that we're keeping people on Chrome. And okay. they're, they're kind of pitching Chromium-based Edge as, if you like Chrome, but you don't like Google, and you don't trust Google, use our browser. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. that's the pitch. Hmm. Yep, yep. Oh, yeah, and there's going to be also um, a new... Office mobile app. Uh, I wrote about this a couple weeks ago. It's codenamed Unity. And so this is almost like the old Microsoft Works, right? It's Word, Excel, and PowerPoint together in one app that people can use on their mobile devices, both iOS and Android. Um, this is interesting because a lot of people who download Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and the other Office apps on their phones are like, wow, this is overkill. I don't need this. And I don't really want to buy an Office 365 subscription to unlock all the capabilities. So what they're thinking is, if we have a lightweight combined Office app that for mobile devices, that might make sense for more people who don't need all the bells and whistles of all of the different Office apps. And this wouldn't require a subscription, it'd be free? It'd be free. Um, and then if you want to, quote, unlock more capabilities, subscribe to Office 365. So it's kind of like a gateway to Office 365. Okay. Yeah. But if you're an Office 365 customer, you're still probably 
downloading these apps individually? I would guess you will continue to do that, um, especially if you have certain ones where you need the full functionality. This sounds like very rudimentary capabilities. You know, work with the files you have, not, um, you know, actually manipulate Excel spreadsheets from what I can tell. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what else can we expect? Um, there's going to be a lot of Power Platform news at this show. Um, Power Platform is Microsoft's low-code, no-code solution, trying to enable people to become citizen developers, as they like to say. And uh, Microsoft's going to be doing some more rebranding. Flow, uh, which is their if this then that competitor, is going to be rebranded to Power Automate. So you're going to have Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate is the suite known as Power Platform. They're going to be adding some robotic process automation to flow. And that's a fancy way. Yeah. Fancy way of saying boring tasks that you want to automate. You can now do that with this product. And, and so they're going to make that capability available. And then this, this to me is interesting. I'm, I'm curious if this is going to take off. They're calling, uh, calling out a new capability called power virtual agents. So what that is, is a way to use Microsoft's bot framework technology for building intelligent bots, but making it easier so that you don't have to be a programmer to know how to build these things. Actually taking the low code, no code capabilities of the power platform, marrying it with bot framework and enabling people to build their own bots for use inside the firewall and externally facing. Hmm. That's going to be kind of interesting. That is interesting. I mean, I, I'm looking for a digital twin right now just so I can yep. answer emails and all the other crap. Yep. So I, that's something I would try out for giggles. Yeah. I mean, you could, you could be a bot. The exactly. Dignan bot. <laughs> I want a bunch of Dignan bots. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there is a ton more that is going to be announced at Ignite. Lots of AI news, lots of Azure news, lots of security news. Um, so this is just the tip of the iceberg. But that, those, are, for me, would be the biggest takeaways, I think. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you, Larry.